go, 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 Joseph, you know what the... I'm going to stop singing now. We're going to have a go at doing some Joseph's coat technique. Hey guys, it's LJ here. Welcome back to my channel. Thank you very much for joining me today. Today we're going to make another card and we're going to do the um, Joseph's coat technique, which I've been wanting to try for ages absolutely ages and so today we're going to try that so i have selected some colors from versicolor so i have got cardinal orange canary fresh green cyan and violet and i did just do a quick swatch of each so you can see the brightness of my inks so i'm going to use those i've also down cut down two cardstock panels to fit so I have a square one and I have a smaller rectangular one and we're going to do the ink blending on these first so I'm going to get my mat and I'm going to pop it on speed up while I do some ink blending okay so we're going to do some ink blending and we're going to start off using a finger dobber and then do some with my blending brushes the makeup brushes first panel i thought i would do a sort of rainbow effect so i thought i'd start on one corner and go up not directly corner to corner i wanted the rainbow to kind of just be off center so i started in the middle so i knew how much room i had either side for the remaining three colors some of them i used the brushes for some of them i used the finger dobbers after this i did go and buy another set of the brushes so that i had enough for one per color because i thought that would make life a lot easier um, so i'm just going to go through and blend the colors across this so after the yellow i thought i'd go to the top corner and do the red so then i've got space in the center to do the orange of course you could use just red yellow and blue to create the colors with the orange green and purple appearing where you mix them but i thought no i will just do each individual color make it nice and bright and deliberate in that sense Okay, for my second piece, I decided to just do a slapdash put colour anywhere type of effect so that we would have a very different look to the first piece. I'm going to use exactly the same colours, blend them in exactly the same way with the brushes and the finger dauber, but just kind of do a slapdash wherever look rather than a set rainbow. <clears throat> so we have our two rainbow inked sheets so i did a stereotypical rainbow in this one and sort of a, a splotchy the nice thing about this technique is it doesn't need to be blended perfectly and i love that fact 
because right now I'm having a serious issue with my wrist um, and in fact actually just touching that bit of my hand makes me really want to cry. Um, I was wearing a splint but the splint's not great for doing this and I'm counting this as my physio for the day because I've been doing quite a lot of the, uh, the physio movements I'm supposed to be doing. So that's my excuse and I'm sticking to it. Um, <laughs> so we are going to do some stamping on these. I'll show you the stamp sets that I've got. I have I have this beautiful English rose from Clearly Besotted. It is a layering rose, so I'm thinking of just maybe using these two images. So that's a Clearly Besotted stamp set. Then the Cardio Majestics. I have a few English rose, which is some small roses and some leaves. I have Fields of Clover, which has got the the clover, the four leaf clover, a smaller one, a flower, and then these sort of thistles. I have basket blooms, which has got these three sizes of flower. And then I have a magazine freebie. So for this um, style of card, you want solid stamps, or mostly solid stamps. So that's why I'm going to use the ones that I'm going to use. We're going to heat emboss them using clear embossing powder so we're going to need powder bag your embossing your clear embossing powder and a heat source as well as your stamps so i'm going to grab my heat mat this is heat resistant but i just find it easier to put things on this because then i can move this around as well if i want to now let me check if i've got that the right way up good all we're going to do is we're just going to stamp out the flowers cover them in clear embossing and then we're going to heat emboss them so first step because these are inked i'm covering every single tiny bit of this in powder because you do not want the embossing ink to stick to the rest of the ink that's there so that's the first stage I'm going to knock off the additional because I don't want to trap powder underneath what we're doing. You could use a stamping platform for this. I'm not going to. I'm going to use a couple of different acrylic blocks. Okay, so all I have done now is stamp a flower on using my embossing ink. And to see where I've been to make it easier... I am coating each flower that I do with the embossing powder so I can see where it is and I can plan out my design a bit better. So just going through, stamping them on and covering them. If there is any overspill, there is powder where you don't want it, just wipe it off with a paintbrush, it comes off really easily. Um, and then I did three or four flowers and decided to heat it because I have a very short attention span and I really like watching embossing powder melt. So I kind of treated myself through this process by not waiting till the end. And then for the other piece, I decided I wanted to use this cute, um, clearly besotted umbrella stamp set. Um, or is it a card IO? I'm not sure. I think it's a card IO actually. Balloon set and it's so cute. I love the balloons on this. For this one, it was a bit easier to see because of the stripes of the ink where it was sort of a mishmash of colours, it was difficult to see where I'd stamp, but with this one it was quite easy to see. So I did the almost the whole sheet, then I used the embossing powder, and then I added on some really small ones. Again, went back to the square one to add some filler pieces, and did the same process again. And then just literally let it dry with my um, heat tool so that all the embossing powder melts, which is just a magic magic process um so i've done the floral one here you can see me doing the balloons and you can see they just suddenly appear as this sort of like shiny surface i love it i love embossing powder it's like magic you can't tell me otherwise i will fight you i am right you are wrong it's magic and i love it <laughs> okie dokie so we have done our heat embossing with our clear and now we're going to go over these with a black and I'm just going to apply this directly over. Um, I'm not going to use a tool and blend it. I'm just going to so 
I fall over? Fact, this is a tiny little pad. Let me get a big enough pad and do the same. It's going to take me forever to use a tiny ink pad. Let's use a bigger ink pad. Let's be sensible. Listen to me being clever. That's better. That's not better at all. Oh my gosh. That. I did not expect that to happen. I can honestly tell you I have never seen that happen before. <laughs> so this ink pad was very juicy so I decided to carry on with my dobber and just cover them both using that the excess ink that was on there. Um, so I did both of them, covered them over with that black ink. I don't know why the ink pad fell off, it was brand new, you heard me opening the plastic. Evidently quite a cheap ink pad, go for the expensive ones, quality is definitely worth the expense. Then I decided to dry the black because it was very very wet. Oh dear. That's so weird. So I was just drying it off to do a second um, run because with, with the dobby you don't get enough ink. Um, should have stayed with the little pad, would have been sensible, but you know, when do I do anything sensible? But as it's drying, it's actually wiping itself almost off of the um, embossed areas, which I think is super cute. So we will give this a wipe. Mm, this does not want to wipe off now. Are you freaking kidding me? Have I messed it up by um no see it's coming off this fine. I say have I messed it up by heating it, but um it's coming off here fine. Okay, do not heat the black. I don't understand well no I do I got very flustered when the ink pad fell apart and it was upsetting because I'd done all the work blending which had hurt my wrist and I was frustrated and I was stressed and so I tried to speed up the process by heating the black which was obviously a stupid thing to do in hindsight so I'm sharing my mistakes with you so that you don't have to make the mistakes too do not heat your black or whatever colour you are putting on top during this technique. Please don't. It's a big, big mistake. <laughs> I've got back to the same spot and I think I've figured out part of my problem. First thing, I think definitely heating the black was a bad idea. I've watched a couple of videos while I was having dinner um, and they don't do that. The second thing I did was when I was embossing these balloons, I kept the heat on them for a lot longer and they look a lot smoother. I'm hoping you can see in the, yeah, you can in the camera, see the way the light is catching on them. They're a lot smoother than the original um, embossing was. So I'm hoping now that this is a lot more solid that it is um, going to resist the black properly. So I'm just going to give it a quick wipe over to wipe off any excess uh, of the powder and then we're going to move on and we're going to do our black. And I don't know which ink to use. I think we're going to use this this black, the Versicolor black on an ink dobber. I think we're just going to use this and go through and pray that it works this time and if it does we'll know the answer don't heat the black okay so there's our first layer and I am really really pleased with that that's already looking much better and I'm going to get a bit, a bit of paper tissue some blue roll and I'm just going to rub over Look at that. I'm going to rub over the embossing just to uh, brighten it up. See, 
the difference. So I think my error was twofold. So I think originally I didn't let the embossing um, heat for long enough to get a nice smooth emboss. Oh, I love that. That was my first mistake. My second mistake was once I put the black on, by heating it to dry it, I was remelting the embossing powder. I don't know why I didn't think of that. Um, <laughs> it's kind of embarrassing that I didn't think of that. But yeah, I think heating it meant that the embossing powder heated up started to melt again and then the black got stuck to it so two things that I have done that you can improve on so I'm going to give this a little bit to dry I'm then going to do a second layer and um, then I will add it to my card base and come back to you okay so we are back with the successful version of Joseph's coat so um, here are my abandoned versions um, yeah, don't heat the black. Note to self. Although I did show this to a friend of mine, he said they look like chalk pastel drawings. So I might be able to try and do something with them, maybe. But here is our finished piece. So I added some a vellum band and a little vellum sentiment to a couple of layers of the thing. And I really, really like, I love using vellum because you can see the colours to show through it. But where there was a little bit of a, um, an overspill of the embossing powder you can hide it really nicely so I have glued the sentiment to the band just behind the letters little dog glue and then I taped the band to the back so this is actually if I can find something thin enough this is not stuck down at all um, and yeah there is our finished card I really really like this technique really really like it I think it's great um, I hope you've enjoyed it too. If you have, give this video a big thumbs up and consider subscribing if you haven't already. I do sort of paper craft mixed media things on a Tuesday and then I do sort of resiny based projects on a Friday. And yeah, thank you very much for spending time with me today, guys. Keep crafting and I'll see you all soon. Bye.